The Okanagan is a continually growing place for the Canadian music industry. With many tourists traveling to the Okanagan for the music as well as the artists, there has been a growing appreciation for local music which takes place within this region. Since the start of the pandemic of March 2020, independent music in Canada has seen a drop in revenue of $233 million. With the current British Columbia provincial health order restrictions, there's been a halt placed on all things live music and a butterfly effect on all other aspects of the music industry. In an attempt to understand this butterfly effect, I spoke to Nori Wentworth of Wentworth Music, Mike Miltmore of Riversong Guitars and Lee's Music, and Matt Rands of Skaha Sound to share their experiences on what it is like to be a business owner in the music industry throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Nori Wentworth. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Wentworth Music and Keystone Music. Wentworth Music's been around since 1966. It's initially started by my grandparents and my dad. Um, and my dad is now the CEO of the company. And the day-to-day -day operations are run by myself and my two brothers. Hi, I'm Mike Miltmore. I'm the Chief Imagineer and CEO of Riversong Guitars here in Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada. And this is my family's music store, Lee's Music. My name's Matt Rands. I run Skaha Sound, which has been in Penticton, BC since 1983. We've been here operating. I've been here for 28 years. And I've had, with the exception of the last year, which I've had off because of COVID. <laughs> so we've got, we've got a lot of gear sitting here. Whew, COVID lockdown. When it started, um, we didn't realize it was a lockdown. We just knew that events were canceled. And I was actually at an event. It was the Kelps Chamber of Commerce's uh, annual general meeting. And I remember sitting there and my phone started lighting up and it was the office saying, hey, these guys just canceled. These guys just canceled. Hey, these guys have canceled. And we lost probably close to $500,000 worth of bookings just during that annual general meeting. Um, and coming out of it, I, I was just like stunned what, what's happening. Uh, of course, that wasn't, uh, that was just a small tip of the iceberg not knowing that it was going to last for over a year and pretty much everything was going to be uh, decimated for the audiovisual industry. When things shut down, um, I was scrambling because I was trying to do it as remotely as possible. Um, our store was closed. Um, I have, you know, with teachers and staff, uh, over 70 people that work for us and work with us. Um, and they were all going, what are we going to do? Nobody had answers. And of course, everybody's looking in, in the direction of management saying, what do I do? And even the government couldn't give us much. So uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. We very quickly mobilized into online sales. Um, we tried to change our lesson into more online lessons. Um, within a few days, we realized that people are stuck at home and they want something to do. Um, so playing an instrument, baking, you know, just having some hobbies was very obvious that that was where people needed to be directing their attention. Um, so we started doing curbside sales. We brought back a manager and a warehouse guy and then a repair guy and then another sales guy. And it just kept getting busier and busier and busier. We were on the phones like crazy. Um, so between online, telephone, curbside, uh, that lasted probably about two months before we, we opened up uh, again to very limited number of customers in the store. Um, we have a, about a 12,000 square foot sales floor, so trying to keep things clean on a daily basis is it's pretty difficult. It's, it's a full-time job for our staff just to you know, sanitize guitars and it, like, you don't realize how, how many things people touch <laughs> you know, until you have to clean up after them. My band, Rumble 100, was playing in Kelowna on March 13th, 14th. So we got back from our trip. I had a weekend out playing in the bar, and we left everything set up for New Year, for um, St. Paddy's Day. And we got the call on Monday before St. Paddy's Day that everything was done. So we actually went to Kelowna the day after St. Paddy's Day, put everything in the van, moved back here, and haven't done anything since. We've been trying to do whatever we can do in repairs and installs in the meantime, and we've sold off a little bit of gear, but as you can imagine, nobody needs <laughs> this kind of equipment through the pandemic. We know history. Whenever there's a downtime, uh, whether it's uh, a downturn in the economy or wartime or, or just, just outside of the Spanish flu that happened in 1918, 
there's been uh, recorded bumps in the music industry where people have started playing, people have connected with music for the right reasons. Uh, I think pre-pandemic we were really pushing to make bigger concerts, bigger shows, and, and everything had to be bigger and better. During the pandemic, everybody's kind of connected with their instruments and they're playing music because they love music. And it's a, it's a way of therapy, it's a way of um, expressing emotions. And that's what we found in the pandemic is uh, our repair company has gone through the roof for repairing instruments, but our manufacturing is, is gone nuts. Um, and we're as busy as we can be w with that. The production industry in Canada employs over 70,000 people directly or indirectly. Um, and a lot of people when they think of, oh, the, mu the music industry or the production industry, they think they go to a festival or they go to a show and they see the band. And that's all they think. It's like, well, who cares? It's only affecting those five guys up on the stage. But it's, it's understanding all the people behind the scenes that make that actually happen. Um, and I'm not just talking about the, the crew setting up and dismantling and running sound. There's everything from you know, florists that have to design things for, for tabletops or caterers or hotels or restaurants or, 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 or. You, know, you go to these festivals that are 100,000 people People are coming from all over the place to, to go to these, and they bring a lot of tourist and tourism dollars into the community. I, I still believe that things are going to go crazy when it comes back because people now, you know, having gone a year or two without it, um, I really do believe that we'll probably see the busiest years. I don't think it's going to just come back we're all of a sudden we're right back to work. I think we're going to have to just build it up from smaller events and it'll just be waiting to see what the guidelines are and how everything's going and how the vaccinations are going and how long it takes us to get that under control. But um, I've, you know, I've had moments where I've thought, you know, do, do we look at getting out of what we do? But I do think we're going to have some really good years ahead um, and then we just have to be better prepared for something like this happening down the road because now that we've experienced it, I, I think that it would be crazy not to be a little bit better prepared for it. My crystal ball it broke about a year ago actually. Um, my prediction for what's going to happen with the music industry is uh, we're going to see a consolidation, I think, with a lot of uh, companies. We've already seen a lot of companies that have unfortunately gone in terms of audiovisual companies, but I think we're going to have a real boom year. It's going to be like the 60s and 70s, where it was bands playing six, seven nights a week, and uh, we're going to really appreciate uh, artists and live music and being able to go out somewhere and enjoy that. Uh, so my prediction is uh, we're going to be real busy with that end of things and we're going to see a lot of really amazing um, music that, that comes from the heart. I'm in a band called Proper Man. I'm the bass player and uh, singer. Uh, there is three other vocalists in the group as well. Um, but we, we've been writing and recording for about six years now. Um, I have played in a handful of, of other bands like covers and that sort of thing, but Proper Man is, is my main focus. It's all originals. Um, we've played some pretty cool shows. Uh, we had lots lined up for last summer, which every single show got cancelled. Um, but what COVID did allot us the, the opportunity to was we could really spend time on refocusing our energy. So rather than getting together, practicing, playing a show, it's the same thing over and over and over. We actually now have time. Let's work on our sound. Let's write some new songs. Let's edit some music videos. Um, when I was in Vancouver um, back in early March, um, obviously not connected to anybody in person, we did a quarantine video. So everybody filmed their own part on their own, uh, sent that to me. I edited it together, and we have this production video. Um, and it, it really hit home with how bands can still be connected and how they can still record. You don't need to be in person. You, you don't all need to be in the recording studio at the same time. 